Hi, I'm Mike, sales manager here at Geek Plus. I'm here to give you a live demo of a P800 robot which I have moving behind me. So the P800 robot is one of the most versatile pieces of kit that we sell. What makes it so versatile is that essentially you can store pretty much whatever you want on top of it. This particular model, the P800, has the capability of lifting a ton, 1,000 kilograms. All it needs to do is sit on top of a rack base that you can see here. So what sits on that could be a pallet, it could be shelves, shelving with totes, dividers, you could put big, long, tall copper pipes in there, surfboards, ironing boards, whatever you want. If it sits on top of that rack, inside that footprint, the P800 will move it. So you've got a ton of variation in what you can store in this system. So how does the system work? Well, as you can see, the bot is moving behind me within a grid. The real basics of the system are we would lay a big grid depending on what you need to store and how much you need to store and fill it with racks. We're going to gain 30% extra storage within this system because we don't need all of the aisles that we need for walking up and down and we, we forgo all the MHE that we need because the robots are going to be moving the stuff around. All we need are a few aisles for the robots to traverse the system obviously to bring the goods to the person. So we have a grid that we've now filled with racks. We fill that with the goods and then what happens is we deploy the robots. The robots will retrieve the racks containing the goods that are needed based on the orders that are, uh, that are put into the system. So where do the orders come from? Well, the client WMS. The client WMS sits on top and the client WMS is king. When orders come in, this is translated by our RMS, our robot management system, into tasks. Tasks that are then performed by the robots. The robot will then find the correct rack with the right parts in it. It will then bring it to the right workstation where a picker will then pick. So how does that element work? How does a picker pick? Well, essentially, a picker will stand in one location at a workstation. To the left or right or behind, there will be put walls, there will be put locations where they will put the picked items to requisite order. It could be put to a pallet, it could be put to a tote, or put to a box. The picker won't move, so they won't be walking around, spending time walking up and down the warehouse. Instead, the rack comes to them and they will pick from it. That saves 50% of the operator's time. So straight off the bat, you've got 50% time saving with all of your operators. So theoretically, you only need half the team size. So now you can redeploy half the team to do something far more meaningful than just walking around a warehouse. This is the front of the P800. This is the obstacle sensor here. This is a three meter look ahead. So within three meters, it will detect any obstacle in its way. What it will do is it will first sound a warning to say that it's noticed there is an obstacle. It will slow down and then if it needs to, it will stop. It will not bump into anything. However, just on the off chance that something does jump out, there is a percussion sensor here as soon as that's triggered, the robot will stop immediately. Safety is priority. So how do we ensure 100% safety? Well, we separate the people from the robots. So for instance, if you look at this grid around me that we have set up here, this is to mimic the normal environment that we would set up a good person picking system. So you don't really want the people and the robots together. Safety is one big factor, but also, people get in the way and they get in the way of the efficiencies of the robot. The robots will work 100% to their efficiency and they will operate how they're intended to operate without people getting in the way. If things that people are getting in the way of, they have to slow down and renegotiate routes and stuff like that, we don't want that. We want the robots to do their job as they're told to do it and get the most out of the system. So we keep the people out, keep the people away from the robots. And also we don't want people walking around, we want people stood being very useful and very productive in one place and we're going to let the robots do the legwork. So, we fence off the area, we make sure that nobody can accidentally end up disturbing the robots. Of course we have to have doors to get in and out of the area, so what do we do? We link that up to, uh, to a safety network and once the door is opened, the system will stop. Essentially like pressing an e-stop. There's an e-stop here on the front, which you will hit and obviously will disable the robot immediately. There is also another restop here on the back of the robot that we can hit 
and to stop the robot immediately. So here at the back of the robot we have the charging port and this is where the robot will plug itself in to be charged. The robots don't need to be told when to charge, they will do it automatically. Charging tends to take about 10 to 20 minutes to charge for a top up charge and you'll never notice the robots going off the charge because obviously the capacity of the system is developed so that obviously the robots are uh, allowed to go off and charge when they need to. You're never going to notice a dip in performance when robots need to charge. The system is obviously designed to take that into account. Now here we have the lifting plate and this is the mechanical piece that lifts up the rack base and obviously lifts the goods so that they can be moved. So this is it lifting up and this is capable of lifting a thousand kilograms this particular model one thousand kilograms here in the center we have the QR code scanner and a light around the outside this QR code scanner scans the underside of the rack base so that it can identify which rack it's picking up. So not only will the system know where the rack exists inside the grid, but it will be also confirmed by locally by the robot and this particular scanner. And the reason we have a light round here is obviously because we want to illuminate the QR code so that we can see it. But one of the also benefits of this is that we don't need to have lights in a system. We can have a dark store because the robots don't need light to operate. They move obviously with the QR code navigation and when they do need light, they create it themselves. Now on the underside, we pretty much have the same, same setup. We have the same QR code scanner which reads QR codes on the ground. And they look like this. We will have a grid of these laid throughout the space and these will tell the robot where it is. It's like a confirmation space. It's like a, a little signpost that says you are here. And again, it can be completely lights off and people don't need to be in the system. So these, all this is, is literally a sticker on the ground. So there's no infrastructure, there's no difficult work. If you want to augment the system, we just lay a few more of these down, we update the system back and then the robots can use that space. Really, really simple. So what other efficiencies can you get from using a P800 goods to person system? Well the software is really really powerful. With the AI learning it will learn what your operation is doing, what your customers are doing, what your buyers are doing and it will not only tell you where to put things away but it will also arrange itself so that you get maximum efficiency of movement within the system. So how does that work? Well let's say for instance we've got fast movers. So where do we place those fast movers? Well ideally we place them in the middle of the rack. We put them in the middle of the rack because they are the most ergonomic place. So when you're picking you reach the middle of the rack, easy to pick. Slow movers tend to go to the top or they go in the bottom. It will put two items that are often sold together in the same rack next to each other. Why? So let's say I'm selling sh uh, shoes and I always buy socks with shoes. Well, I'm going to put those two together so that when I'm picking I get those two items and a two for one and again I'm going to get more efficiency all of this comes built in with P800 Geek Plus goods to person system this is really where the magic happens in this kind of system you're going to get maximum throughput maximum storage capability maximum efficiencies all built in essentially the software the AI is the brain and the robots are the hands the robots are articulating what the WMS wants to do. So the WMS wants the absolute dream system. It wants to run it as slick and as clean as possible. And the robots are the hands that are going to make that happen. One of the great, great things about the Geek Plus P800 Good to Person system is that we can use, we can function on an omni-channel basis. Essentially what we're creating here is we can put in all the goods into one pot, whether that's e-com, whether that's retail, whether that's direct to customer, whether that's B2B, we can put it all into the one grid. So you're getting the most out of your warehouse space because you're not having to separate all goods, you're not having to separate customers, you're not having to separate product types, 
what all you're having to do is just worry about putting it all into one space and you're going to get 30 percent more you're going to get 30 percent more capacity out of the same space that you once occupied why because obviously like i said you're putting everything into one spot so there's no air gaps and also the robots require really small aisles to operate so you're getting most out of your footprint so all that happens is if you want to fulfill a b2b order which might might be 100 lines, 1,000 lines, again, you're just going to deliver, the robots are going to deliver those goods to an operator who's going to pick them maybe to totes or to a pallet. The same way that if you're delivering goods to a direct customer, B2C, the goods are going to come to the same operator who's going to pick one, maybe two lines, and then put that in an order tote or package that up to deliver to a customer, to a direct customer. All that's going to happen within the one system. So all we have to do is worry about filling the system with goods and the AI within the system will order the goods accordingly and then as the orders come through it will just tell the operators how to pick and where to pick to so that we're getting the most out of that system. So we don't have to separate our warehouse into high bay, into pallets, into B2B, into different customers. We can put everything into one pot and the system will worry about the details. Grocery is a huge, huge market for this particular robot. It fits in so well. Why? Because we have time sensitive and perishable goods. We have multiple SKUs, all different shapes and sizes, and also multiple destinations where we want to take places, take products to. So generally we're getting deliveries from many different locations and we have to deliver them to very different locations. We're gonna to have to deal with goods very quickly inside the system. So how do we do that? Well, essentially, again, we map out a big grid. And what we're going to do is we're going to feed it with the goods we need. What we can do then is we can pick according to what stores might need, what direct customers might need. And we can do that on a LIFO, last in, first out basis. Because obviously when you've got perishable goods, you want to make sure things don't get spoiled within the system. You want to make sure things are going and getting delivered as soon as possible and not going bad within the system. You want to make sure you're not forgetting things or, or you forget the location of where you put a perishable good on a, on a rack. The system will have parameters set to make sure that anything that is perishable uh, and is date sensitive is delivered at the right time to the right place. What we can also do is we can use our AI technology to route certain products to certain customers at certain times. If you want to put a certain set of parameters around a system to say actually this particular customer uh, orders these particular items on this particular day, we know that we need to position the system in order to fulfill that. We can see trends and what we can do is facilitate those trends to make sure that we deliver things in the most efficient, time sensitive way. Goods returns is often a real pain point, especially in the apparel industry. So how do we tackle it? Well, usually we'd get all the, the returns, we'd collate them, and we'd have to sort them per size, per style, per color, per customer, whatever it might be. But instead with a Geek Plus goes to person system, all we have to do is scan the return, and we could pretty much put everything into a single tote. That particular garment is then captured within that particular location. So that if we want to fulfill an order later, all we do is recall that particular location to the operator, scan to confirm, and then we we'll fulfill that order. So we're forgoing all this big sortation process and organization, and we're actually really, really making that operation really lean. We can also confirm picks by using visual confirmations and cues on the screen. So we can confirm by color, by size, by style. As a visual representation, we could basically take a, uh, you basically take the input from a website. So you can say the image that's given on the website that the customer will see will also be presented to the operator. So they know exactly from a visual confirmation what they're looking for, and they're able to confirm that by scanning the barcode. And this makes the operation a lot slicker, a lot less labor intensive. Same with shoes. If we're returning shoes of different sizes, different styles, different big boxes, small boxes, boots, baby shoes, whatever it might be, all we have to do is again just put them into a rack like this which is tremendously versatile 
and all we're going to do is we're going to recall that rack to the picker when those goods are required and again they're confirmed with a scan and a visual confirmation. 3PLs, manufacturing, pharmaceutical, flexibility is the name of the game here and that again comes around from the configuration and the configurability of the rack itself. You can put anything on top of it and obviously the system will optimize how it brings those goods to a person. A really good idea for this is good stores. So instead of having uh, a good store where your highly skilled operators have to go up and down with a shopping cart to get all the kits that they need, they can essentially call a robot to a portal where they will get the kit and then go and do their work. Or better still, we can link it with a subsystem like using our sorting S series which can also help with taking goods from cell to cell. So using good stores on site, on premises, really good way, and it's a really good way for keeping count of inventory. So if you are a just-in-time manufacturer or you've got customers that order just in time, you want to make sure your stock levels are where they need to be. You want to make sure that you've got the right kit on the shelves all the time. You don't want somebody to be going away to go make a special piece of kit, a gearbox or some kind of assembly, just to find that you've not got enough washers, you've not got enough gears. What you'd like to do is make sure you can see before you even start the job that you've got everything you need right there and then. The system will own that. It will contain all the information. It will contain every piece of equipment, every piece, every goods, every, every component that you have will be contained within the system so you know whether to start a job or not or whether you need to getting low on stocks and you should order. The system will also be able to put those key components together so when you're kitting, the job's already done for you. It was already done, you, done for you at put away. So again, that's one of the ways we can really, really install efficiency in manufacturing and keep really skilled workers really busy at all times. In pharmaceutical, where precision is paramount, this system really comes into its own because what we're doing is we're keeping key control over key medications and products that really need to be looked after with all traceability from manufacture to delivery. All of that information is contained and known within the system and can be looked after and can be dealt with accordingly. If you're delivering to a particular customer using a key set of parameters or methodologies, the system can have those rules and you can deploy that within the system so that you can pick according to what's needed. You make sure that basically when you're delivering to the customer, there's nothing short of perfect. With 3PLs, where you've got a vast array of product types, you've got a vast array of customers, you need maximum flexibility within a system. What you want to do is you want to say, well actually I've got m lots of different customers and they store lots of different types of product. Flexibility is what you need. Customers come, they go, you might lose customers, you might gain customers, you've got key expansion so you need to augment a system. Again, flexibility is what you need. This is where this type of system really comes into its own because you can bend and flex the system according to what you need and when you need it. And 3PL is a key cornerstone 3PL is an absolute mainstay when it comes to picking and this operation, this piece of equipment really, really does come into its own when you need to do that.